Good afternoon, Gail Borden families. <clears throat> this is Miss Jen from the Kids Space Department. And we want to welcome you to <clears throat> Baking with Kids Oven Bake S'mores. I know normally you guys are used to seeing Miss Tabitha. Uh, Miss Tabitha and I work together in Kids Space, and one day we were chatting and realized that in addition to both of us loving books, we both love to bake. So Miss Tabitha was kind enough to let me take a turn and um, share with you guys a recipe that I really like that's very summery called oven baked s'mores. So we are going to um, do some baking and then we are also going to uh, read a couple stories after that. Um, so are we ready to start? The first thing we want to do, and I'll go slowly, is preheat our ovens to 350 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So again, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So kids, we are going to use an oven today, so you probably want your grown-up to help you. I'm sure grown-ups, you want to help. Um, there is one other step that can, we have two options. You can either use the stove top or the microwave. So if the grown-ups are present and want to try the stove top, that's totally fine. If uh, with the kids, we'd prefer to use the microwave, you could do that too. Uh, the second thing we want to do, you need a uh, square pan. It can be an 8x8 eight eight or a 9x9 nine nine inch pan. And we're going to line it to make cleanup easier with either foil or if you bake a lot, maybe you have parchment paper. Either one works. Um, I'm going to use foil today, but we can do either one. If you don't have um, parchment or if you don't want to use the foil, you don't have to. Again, it's just to make cleanup easier. So all I'm doing is ripping a piece of foil and I'm going to push it down into my pan. All the way around. to coat the bottoms and the sides. Okay, so we've got the pan coated. Oven baked s'mores. So summer is coming. Summer means a lot of fun things. Summer is my favorite season. Summer is school is getting out, uh, weather's getting warmer, we have pretty plants, bubbles, chalk, swimming if it gets really warm. And my family goes camping every year. And what do you think of when you think campfire? You think of s'mores, right? That's one of the main reasons to have a campfire. Or maybe you don't go camping, but you have some kind of grill or fire pit in your backyard and you do bonfires and you like to do s'mores. But what if we don't want to take the time to do the bonfire or if we don't want to take the time to, uh, if we're not camping, this is an indoor version of s'mores. And one thing I really like about this is that it's not exact. Sometimes with baking, you need exact measurements and we need a couple measurements that are exact, but a lot of it is just layering the different ingredients um, to make bars that are layered with the ingredients of s'mores. Okay, so we set the oven. So again, if you're just joining us, the oven is at 350 degrees. And then you wanna line your pan with foil or parchment paper and that's strictly to make the cleanup easier. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is prepare the cooked part, which is like a sauce, a graham cracker sauce, that we will use um, to layer. So, with the recipe, first we're going to take one stick of butter, so one complete stick, which equals a half cup, and we're going to cut it into pieces. So if you were doing it on the stove, you would do it in your saucepan. I'm actually going to microwave it. So I'm going to cut the pieces into my glass bowl. So let's do that. And we're cutting it to make the melting easier because if you cut, if you try to melt a whole stick of butter, it'll take a lot longer than if you have it in sections. So right now I'm just taking one complete stick of butter, one whole stick, and cutting it into pieces because we need that butter to melt. So I have one stick of butter in my bowl. 
if you were doing the saucepan, it would be one stick of butter in your saucepan. That's up to you. And then what we need to do is melt this butter. So I'm going to put it in my microwave. So again, if you're following along at home, you want to cut the butter. Our oven is at 350. Our square pan is lined with foil or parchment paper. And we took uh, a microwave safe bowl, because I'm using my microwave, but if you wanted to do it on a stove top, you could. And you're gonna cut one stick of butter up into pieces, and then we're gonna melt the butter. So I have it in the microwave right now so that it will melt. The next step, you're going to need graham cracker crumbs, brown sugar, vanilla extract, and milk. Okay, let's see if it melted, and it did. So my stick of butter is now liquid. I'm gonna stir it up just a little bit to make sure that any small remaining pieces of butter are melted. Okay, so there's my butter. Next, we're gonna whisk in brown sugar, milk, and vanilla. So again, we have our brown sugar, milk, and vanilla. And I will say um, my family uses lactose-free milk, so you can use that. I, I have to be honest, I've not tried alternative milks like oat milk or something like that, but um, you, we want a, some form of milk to add into the butter. But first I'm going to measure my brown sugar so you need two thirds cup brown sugar. So I have my one third measuring cup and I'm gonna dump in one third and then get one more. Okay, so there's all the brown sugar that we need. Grab a whisk also. You don't have to have a whisk, but I'm going to just use that in addition to my scraper. Okay, so just to recap so far, we've got one stick of butter. So we've got a half a cup of butter, which is one stick, in a microwave safe bowl. Oh, there's my oven getting up to temperature. And then I'm using that and whisking in two thirds cup of brown sugar. Doesn't matter if it's light brown sugar or dark brown sugar, but two thirds cup brown sugar. And I'm whisking that into my melted butter. Okay, once we've got the butter in there, then we want the milk and the vanilla. So we need one teaspoon. So here's my teaspoon. One teaspoon of vanilla extract is gonna go in with the one stick of butter and with the brown sugar. Perfect. So there is my one teaspoon. I'm gonna pour that in. So now we've got one stick of butter, brown sugar, and vanilla extract. And I'm mixing all of those in my microwave safe bowl. Again, if you chose to put them in your saucepan on the stove, that's totally fine too. You're gonna to melt the butter. And then once it's melted, you can turn the heat off and you're gonna whisk in these other things. Okay, so we're done with vanilla extract. So that ingredient is done. Usually when I bake, um, either by myself or with my kids, as I finish ingredients, we move them out of the way so we know that they're done. Okay, so then we need, let's double check, a half a cup of milk. So I'm gonna pour that. So we have our milk and our liquid measuring cup.
Okay. So now we've got the butter. One stick. Oh, Maddie and Brian. Hello. I see you guys are joining us. I love that. I hope you guys enjoy baking and I hope you like dessert because this is a really yummy dessert. So we've got the one stick of butter. We've got two thirds cup brown sugar in here. We've got one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I'm about to add a half a cup of milk to this. Again, also, in case you're just joining us, um, this was in my microwave to melt the butter. However, if you wanted to use the saucepan, you can do that too and just get your butter melted. And once you do, you can pull it off the heat and do these other things. But since we're doing this for kids, I wanted to make sure we have an option where you do not have to use the oven. I'm sorry, the stove top. Okay. So we've got the milk in there. So we've got the butter. We've got the brown sugar, the milk, and vanilla. Now, before I keep going with that, we are going to be using the uh, graham cracker crumbs. So if you did not get this chance to see the recipe ahead of time, which is in the description, we need one and a quarter cup of graham cracker crumbs, which is separate from whole graham crackers. So what I like to do when I'm doing graham cracker crumbs, uh, for whatever recipe it is, I will take my graham cracker and I usually get a Ziploc bag and I've done some of mine already, you can see, but I just put the graham crackers in there. And then I will use a rolling pin and just kind of roll it over the graham crackers to crush them in crumbs. If you do not have a rolling pin, you can use your measuring cup. It might take a little longer, but you can just push down on it to create the crumbs. You can use a can if you have a can in your pantry or in your um, kitchen somewhere and just pound on the bag. Or when it's the bigger pieces, you can just, if you want to give the kids something to do, you can put them in the bag and just have them crush them with their hands. That's great for fine motor and it keeps them occupied and that's a big help because we need these. Okay, so we need one and a quarter cups. This might be a little bit more than that. This was one entire sleeve of graham crackers out of the box. So we have one sleeve of graham crackers that I put in the Ziploc earlier and um, crushed them into crumbs. So we want to microwave our liquid mixture, which again is the butter cut into pieces and melted the brown sugar, the vanilla extract, and we're going in the milk and I'm going to warm it just a tiny bit, maybe like 15 seconds, 10 seconds. Because we just want to take uh, the heat or the, I'm sorry, the cool chill off the milk just a little bit. And then we are going to whisk our graham cracker crumbs into the pan, the bowl. Okay, so here is my liquid mixture of the butter that's melted, the brown sugar, the vanilla, the milk. And now we've made our graham cracker crumbs. You can buy them um, as crumbs or you can make them. And there is one and a quarter cups in here. Maybe a little bit more, but that's fine. So the next thing we do is whisk all of these crumbs into our liquid mixture. So here's my bowl full of crumbs and the liquids. And I'm just whisking, whisking, whisking and stirring. And I really like uh, this website that I found this recipe because they just call this the goop. So you know if something is mainly graham crackers and butter and sugar and vanilla, and a bunch of sweetness, and they call it the goop. It's kind of like the glue that's going to hold 
our oven bake s'mores together. Also, if you are um, joining us late, you need the oven set to 350 degrees and you need a square pan that's lined with foil or parchment. However, if you don't do that, it's not a huge deal. That's more for easy cleanup because we're dealing with marshmallow and chocolate and this uh, goop mixture, it's pretty sticky as far as cleanup goes. Okay, so we've got the bowl with the goop in it. Again, one more time, the goop is the unsalted butter or butter, one stick, the two thirds cup brown sugar, the half a cup of milk, the one teaspoon of vanilla, and the one and a quarter cups of graham cracker crumbs. So we've made that. In addition to that now, so this is one of the pieces, right? We're gonna be making some s'mores layers. So this is one of the layers. The other layer is going to be now whole graham crackers, right? So what are the classics now for s'mores? Now we get to the very classic summer s'mores. Um, oh, and I have another friend, Riley, who loves s'mores and is so excited. Yay, I love that. Sorry, um, since I'm doing this and trying to read the comments, I apologize I didn't comment earlier. So um, we have... I'm sure Riley knows this if he, loves s'more, he or she loves s'mores. We have graham crackers, marshmallows, and chocolate, right? The only difference is we have this additional layer of our super yummy goop or glue that is different ingredients like the butter and the milk and the brown sugar um, to go in between the layers. Once we've made the, uh, the, the liquid mixture, the rest of this is not very exact. And I was saying that earlier, that's one thing that I really like about this recipe. Sometimes with baking, it's so exact, it makes it difficult, especially if you're doing it with the little ones. But this one is really just kind of, you have rough ideas of quantities, but if you have a little bit of more or a little bit less, it doesn't matter either way. Okay, so I did not use my stove top, but my oven is warmed up and ready at 350 degrees. And I have my pan ready. So let me just take a second here and open some other marshmallows. We need six cups of mini marshmallows and we want the mini ones because they're gonna melt a lot easier, right? It just saves time. They're gonna melt a lot easier for the purposes of our recipe. If we had the big ones, it just wouldn't work very well. So we have, and that's one thing I like too, is we're working with small pieces of all of these ingredients, which makes it easy. So I have marshmallows, and this is definitely not six cups, so I got a second bag. We're gonna need a couple sleeves of graham crackers. I think the recipe said uh, 32 to 48. It might not take that many. We'll see how many we need, because basically we're making three layers inside our pan. I'm gonna open one more though, because I know one sleeve is not gonna be enough. So I'm gonna open one more sleeve of graham crackers so that we're ready. So once we start layering, we will be good to go. And then finally, gotta have the chocolate, right? So we're gonna have our marshmallows, our grams, our chocolate and then our goopy glue sweet mixture. So I'm gonna rip open. And again, we're probably gonna use most, if not all of one bag of chocolate chips. I'm using semi-sweet chips um, for this time. My family really likes dark chocolate. You could do that. You could do whatever you want. You could do bittersweet. There's so many cool um, chocolate chip flavors now that you can find at the grocery store. So um, you're welcome to use whatever you Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just repeat layers. We're almost like making a s'more lasagna, which is awesome and amazing. Lasagna is good, s'mores are awesome. So it's gonna be repeating layers of graham crackers that are glue and then marshmallows and chocolate. And we're gonna do that three times. And I'll talk you guys through it as we're doing it. But so it's graham cracker base, then our goopy sweet glue, marshmallows, chocolate graham crackers, glue, marshmallows, chocolate, graham crackers, glue, marshmallows, chocolate. So we're just gonna repeat that. 
uh, three times. So here we go. And this part is fun because it's almost like we're doing a puzzle. So I'm going to start with a whole piece and set it in the bottom of my pants. So I'm going to do a few of those and then I'll show you guys. And you might have heard that some of mine are breaking totally fine. It's all going to taste the same. And actually we're probably going to end up breaking some pieces to make them fit on this side. So I've got three this way. This is kind of fun too, you guys, because it's like doing um, a puzzle, a fun edible puzzle with graham crackers. So then I'm going to do one in this direction. So you can see I've covered most of the pan, one layer. And then I'm going to break off one more piece and see if that'll fit. It's still a little too big. And again, it does not have to be exact, but there we go. So I fit one, two, three this way, one sideways, and then a tiny portion, maybe a quarter gram going the other way. That's our first step. We've got the graham cracker layer. So we've got all our separate ingredients. We've got the marshmallows, mini marshmallows. We've got the chips, we've got the grams. And then earlier, oven is set to 350. We took all our different ingredients to make our delicious um, sweet glue that's gonna go in between. Okay, so we need three layers. So you're gonna try to divide things up now into thirds basically, but we're just estimating. So I'm gonna pour, and if every inch of your pan is not covered, that's not a problem. So for example, right here, there's a little section that's not, that is no big deal at all. So I'm going to take my liquid and my bowl happens to pour really nicely because it has a spout, but if not, you can just um, pour it in and use your spatula or scraper. And you do not have to cover it to every corner. And I'll show you guys in one second. Okay, so I've poured it in. And it's not covering everything corner to corner, which is fine. I'm going to spread it out a little bit. But again, this is just a messy, fun, summery dessert. I mean, if there's one thing, right, s'mores are super messy. You've got the sticky marshmallow and the melty chocolate. And that's part of the fun about it. Okay, so I've got one layer of grams, one layer of our delicious glue, our goopy glue of brown sugar and milk and vanilla and butter and our graham cracker crumbs. So then um, next, just making sure it doesn't matter the order. Yeah, marshmallows. So it's saying six cups of marshmallows. So I have my one cup out. Again, if we're saying six cups, dividing by three, roughly two cups of marshmallows. So I'm gonna fill this up with one cup. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle them all over. That's only one, so I'm gonna do one more cup here. And there's my second cup of marshmallows. And I'm spreading out, trying to just get it in the whole, cover the whole area and I'll show you. Okay. So we've got the marshmallows kind of covering the glue. And then we've got, if we're filling this and it's 12 ounces and we're dividing it by three, I'm doing my math there, um, four ounces. But for this, I'm just gonna kind of estimate. If you don't want to, if we're talking two and a half cups, it may be about three quarters of a cup. So I'm just gonna fill this most of the way. So I'm filling my one cup measure, but not all the way, but most of the way. Okay, so I've got this mostly filled up. And again, just like the marshmallows, I'm going to sprinkle these all over. Okay, and then I'm gonna pat it down just so it all kind of sits nicely and is even, because remember, 
we're making layers. We're making um, a building. We're constructing a multi-layer building. If you guys uh, ever come into the library, you know me from STEAM with Miss Nikki, and we're all about engineering structures. So she and I have not really tried to make a dessert structure before, so this would be something new. So there is my layers. So just to recap, we have the graham crackers, the whole pieces, making a layer. If there's little gaps in between, it's fine. Then I put down some of our paste, and then the marshmallows and the chocolate chips. Now we're gonna do a second layer. What's better than one layer? Two layers. So we're gonna do another layer. So it was about three graham crackers one way. Kind of patting it down. Again, this is kind of like the most amazing food puzzle. So we've got second layer. So we've got grams, glue, marshmallows, chips. Now we're doing our second layer, grams, glue, marshmallows, chips. So we did the grams. So you guys know what's next. It is the glue. Again, does not have to be exact. Just pouring some on here. And I'm gonna spread it around. All right, so now we've got our glue layer. Oh, and as someone's saying, it's a little messy. Yes, it is. Very messy, just like your classic s'mores. Okay, so now our marshmallows, right? So I'm going to get a couple more cups of marshmallows. Okay, so there's roughly one cup. And then I'm doing my set. I will say too, don't be, don't be scared. Oh, hi, Miss Alicia. I see her saying hi, Miss Jen. Um, the final layer is going to be pretty tall, but when I've done this in the past, it's not really an issue. Um, even if it's a little bit above the top of your pan, because everything kind of just melts straight down. So. Okay, so we did that. I'm gonna get some more chips. And I'm gonna sprinkle those chocolate chips. So there's a second layer. And you can see this is almost basically full to the top already, but I'm just gonna push that final layer down. So we've got our two layers. What's better than two? One more layer. So we are going to do one more layer, my friends, of grams next. So one more layer. These you might have to push down a little more firmly, but it does work out. And it turns out it's usually about four and a half or so um, graham crackers for each layer. Okay, so there's my final layer. So we've got three layers repeating over and over. Grams, the um, graham cracker gluey mixture, marshmallows chips, and then grams, gluey mixture, marshmallow chip. And this is our final layer, grams, gluey mixture, marshmallows chips. So we're on the grand finale layer here. We're almost done building our s'mores lasagna bake. Okay, so I'm spreading this out using my spatula.
Okay, so now we've got, we have two more steps for the third layer and then we're gonna go in the oven. So it's the marshmallows. And this layer, the only thing I might suggest is maybe try to keep it away from the edges a little bit. And since I'm kind of the last layer here, I'm just gonna do it by hand and just kind of estimate, which is totally fine too. And then the rest of the chips or however much you feel like you can fit on your towering pan of sweet dessert goodness and honestly you know if there's less on this top layer there's two giant awesome sweet layers underneath so i think we're all good no matter what i'm going to do a little bit more in the corners Okay, so here we go. So this thing is quite heavy. There's a lot going on. Um, so the oven is at 350. We've got our a nine or nine by nine, our square pan, nine by nine or eight by eight. And essentially we've made three layers of s'more ingredients. The only one that's unusual from your typical s'more is we created kind of this cool, caramely, um, gluey, goopy mixture that is um, one stick of butter cut into pieces and warmed, two thirds cup brown sugar, one half cup of milk, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one and a quarter cups of um, graham cracker crumbs. So we did the liquid first, the butter, whisked in the other liquid ingredients, and then I made graham cracker crumbs using just some whole graham crackers, put them in a bag, and crushed them with a um, rolling pin. You can use a can, you can have your kids do it, like I said, if you have them, put one in, especially my younger friends, but honestly, any of them, right? Here, kids, let's make graham cracker crumbs. It's great for fine motor. It does not make a mess because it's in a Ziploc already, right? And so then once they've got it going, you can um, get it smaller after that with like a can or your rolling pin or whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the oven and it says 16 to 20 minutes so i'm going to do about 15 minutes i don't want it to burn so it's going right in the oven now this is super hot my friends so grown-up assistance absolutely necessary right now and i'm going to set my timer and actually i'm going to do a couple minutes less just because um my oven runs warm and i've always told my kids my own children better to undercook it and keep cooking than to overcook because once it's overcooked or overbaked, you can't go back. So, okay. So while that is cooking, um, we're going to read a couple stories while we wait. Let me grab my first one. This is called Most Marshmallows. Most Marshmallows. And you can see the little cute, let me hold that up so you guys can see really well the Marshmallow Friends on the cover. And the author is Rowboat Watkins. Okay, so Most Marshmallows by Rowboat Watkins. I'm gonna read a page and then get the um, book nice and close so you guys can see. Most marshmallows don't grow on trees. Apparently these do though. Or come from storks or even Mars. Most marshmallows are mostly born to one sweet parent or two. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. We've got baby marshmallows here and there's one over here between the parents. 
So they're born to one parent or two. And they live in homes, just like we do, of one kind or another. They celebrate birthdays. They watch TV. Did you guys know that marshmallows hack these secret lives? Because I have to tell you, I did not. And I have marshmallows in my house pretty much all the time. They go to school most mornings. But this is the funny thing. I don't think too many of my friends do these things. Here's what they learn in school, you guys. They learn to be squishy and how to stand in rows. Maybe the rows, right? Maybe lining up for circle time or to go somewhere. But I don't know any child, including my own kids, who ever went to school to learn to be squishy. They also learn why they can't breathe fire. Fire is only for dragons. Yeah, I don't think fire and marshmallows might be the best idea, right? as we can see right here in our friends, this poor guy. Most marshmallows eat dinner together and fall asleep most nights. Although this is cute too, we have a marshmallow friend who's reading in bed, love that. To dream about nothing, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. But some marshmallows secretly know that all marshmallows can do anything. Oh my gosh, that's just like you guys. You can do anything. We've got one parachuting. We've got one climbing a mountain. I love it or be anything. It looks like some of these guys want to be part of a circus. How cool would that be? They dare to imagine. Oh man, he's on horseback fighting his number one nemesis of fire breathing dragon. We know fire and marshmallows don't mix, right? So, roar! The end. Who knew that marshmallows led such exciting secret lives? Okay, one more story. I kind of love this guy. This is Scaredy Squirrel Goes Camping. Scaredy Squirrel Goes Camping by Melanie Watt. And there's even a top secret warning at the front. Warning, Scaredy Squir Squirrel insists you check your zippers before you read this book. Now, I'm not exactly sure why. Scaredy Squirrel's not a big fan of zippers. I know that. Okay, so we have our friend Scaredy Squirrel, right? Scaredy Squirrel never goes camping. He'd rather be comfortable inside than risk going out in the rugged wilderness. Besides, setting up camp seems like a lot of trouble. If you guys have ever camped, it is a lot of work, but then it's a lot of fun. Here are just a few troublemakers that Scaredy Squirrel is afraid could get too close for comfort. Skunks, mosquitoes, quicksand, the three bears, penguins, and zippers. Okay, I don't think I've ever seen penguins camping, but I don't know. So here's a few of Scaredy Squirrel's fears of what he might find camping. So he finds a simple way to sit back and enjoy camping from a safe distance. The TV. So he's watching, the TV schedule says the joy of camping. The joy of camping at 6 p.m., the barbecue challenge at 7 p.m., renovate your RV at eight, surviving the wilderness at nine, and when moose attack at 10. So it's a full outdoor lineup. Scaredy Squirrel sets up his new television but he realizes there's a problem. Oh boy, do you guys see the problem? What's this here? His cord. Uh, I don't think that's gonna work, Scaredy Squirrel. 
Reaching the nearest electrical outlet will require major survival skills. Okay, so Scaredy Squirrel's got some advice here. A few survival supplies Scaredy Squirrel needs to pack. A really long extension cord. Popsicles. Tomato juice. A bag of cement. Okay, I'm getting a little confused, Scaredy Squirrel. Dictionary. Pliers. Instant oatmeal. And a fan. Okay, I'm a little confused by some of these, you guys, but we'll see what Scaredy Squirrel says. The wilderness outfit, as modeled by Scaredy Squirrel. A netted hat to dodge bugs. A penny for good luck. A neckerchief to scout. A nose plug, in case there's anything stinky, like a skunk. Water wings to stay afloat. A badge to signal peaceful intentions. A walkie-talkie to stay in contact, a camouflage jacket to blend in, rubber boots to stay quick and dry. Notice no zippers. And the scaredy motto is, a prepared camper is a happy camper. I think scaredy squirrel's right about that. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's our campground mission. Let me show you guys before I read it here. This is pretty intense, you guys. He's got a whole itinerary and a plan, a map. 0530 hours, leave his comfort zone. 0531, run through the woods, keep a low profile. 0541, enter the campground. 0545, locate electrical outlet. 0548, plug in that extension cord. 0549, run back to home base. And 0559, get comfy and watch the joy of camping. And here's the mission. Here's the map. He's leaving the comfort zone. Uh-oh. Place a walkie-talkie at the foot of the tree to stay in contact. Mosquitoes are itching to get you. Fan yourself to blow them off and away. Wherever there's coolers, penguins rule. They're as cold as ice and won't warm up to you. Toss them popsicles to occupy their sharp beaks. Quicksand will bring you down. To avoid that sinking feeling, mix in cement. Oh, I'm starting to see some of these strange ingredients. Keep a nose out for skunks, and if sprayed, overreact. Wash off the stink with gallons and gallons of tomato juice. Wear water wings to stay above all water. Campsites host a zillion zippers. Uh-oh. We know he's worried about that. If you get caught, use pliers to break loose. You're not out of the woods until you get past the three bears. Their weakness? I didn't know this. Oatmeal. Serve them a quick bowl and do not snooze. Nose plugs are a must in this area, which is the potty. Note to self, if the outlet is too high, use a dictionary to step up. Oh my gosh, I feel like Scaredy Squirrel thought of everything. Oh my gosh, so then he has the rubber boot camp and fitness training charts. He did some warm-up routines. He did some stretches, some stretching up high, touching his toes 143 times. And the scaredy promise is a fit squirrel is a safe squirrel. And then there was an obstacle course practice run. Run, but never run into trouble. He looks so cute in his little outfit, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is important. He's made a plan. I love that Scaredy Squirrel faces his fears and thinks things out. Made a plan. Outdoor, outdoor conditions. If it's sunny, our mission is a go. If it's cloudy, we're going to wait. If it's rainy, we're going to wait. If it's windy, guess what? We're going to wait. If it's snowy, going to wait. And if there's volcanic activity like a volcanic eruption, it's a no-go. We're going to cancel. The scaredy rule, if all else fails, take cover and play dead. The following afternoon, right on schedule, Scaredy Squirrel proceeds toward the campground. He tugs, he pulls, he looped, he loops, 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 but suddenly, oh my gosh, a penguin appears. This was not part of the plan even though he did think about it ahead of time. Scaredy Squirrel panics. He spins, he dashes, he bolts. 
He splashes, he climbs, he crashes, he takes cover. Oh my gosh, you guys. He's talking about the wilderness. Where is Scaredy Squirrel? I thought he was in the wilderness. This doesn't really look like the wilderness to me. He plays dead for 30 minutes, one hour, two hours. Scaredy Squirrel finally gets the drift. He forgets all about skunks, mosquitoes, quicksand. Oh, excuse me, one second. Three bears, penguins, and zippers. The wilderness isn't meant to be seen from afar. It's meant to be enjoyed up close, which I love. He's in a canoe, and it looks really beautiful. He's trying to get the sunset of him. Scaredy breathes the fresh air. Oh, he savors roasted marshmallows. He's getting ready to make s'mores, you guys. Gazes up at the stars, gathers pine cones, listens to songs, and gets comfortable. Notice he uses a really long stick to not be close to the fire, which is quite smart. Scaredy is very careful with safety. Early the next morning, he plugs in his extension cord and follows it back home. So he uses that as his trail to get back. This wild adventure has inspired him to approach camping differently. So here we can see he's finally going to plug in. He's all excited, his TV and his big extension cord. He's been gone all night. P.S. Some things are worth the trouble. Oh my gosh. I thought he was going to go camping. Nope. But look what he's doing, you guys. He's using a toaster to marshmallows. All right, well, that's perfect timing because my timer went off. So let me check and see how our stuff is looking here in the oven. Oh, yeah. We're getting pretty good here. I'm going to show you guys. My marshmallows are starting to turn brown and the chocolate's melting. I'm going to put it in for a couple more minutes, but it's almost done. And honestly, I could probably take it out right now and it would be fine. It's kind of now a preference of how brown do you want the marshmallows and how melty do you want the chocolate. Um, so we're winding down with our program. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you it turned out. Please um, feel free to let us know. And what else? We have our summer programs are going to be underway here soon, starting in June. Summer reading has already started, you guys. So if you enjoy reading, which I bet a lot of you do, whether you like to read on your own or mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or some caregiver reads to you, you can do our summer reading. You can register online through our website or you can come in. Our paper log was provided in our um, newsletter. And there's so many cool prizes. You can earn cool badges, like Scaredy Squirrel had a badge on his vest before he took off. So that's definitely something you want to check out. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming up, and the summer is just starting. And now you have one great, awesome, summery dessert that you can wow all your friends and family with. So the other nice thing, um, adults, moms, dads, grown-ups that are helping, is you can serve this dessert hot or room temperature. So once it comes out, I would let it cool for a little bit because the marshmallow and chocolate are going to be super hot. I don't want anyone to burn their mouths. But once it cools down a little bit, you can cut it into bars or if it's still pretty warm, you can scoop it up. There's really no wrong way to eat this. Um, and then once it's done and it's cooled, if you want to have some when it's warm and then let the rest cool, you can cut it into bars and just rewarm it in the microwave for maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Because I actually prefer it warm. But um, some people might like it room temperature, too. I don't know about cold. You could always throw it in the fridge. But there's nothing in here that needs to be refrigerated, so it can be stored at room temperature in an airtight container. So, and let's see here. I think, ooh, four seconds left. We'll take one more peek here before we go. Let's see what happened. Oh, yeah. There we go, you guys. I've got my brown marshmallows. And my melted chips. So I think we're all set. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much to Riley and Maddie and Brian and any other friends that popped in. And hi, Miss Alicia. I'll see you soon. You guys have a good evening. And we hope to see you soon. Thanks so much. Join us again on Facebook Live. Bye.